Hey there! In the previous video, where I tried to recreate an elastic cursor effect, I showcased some amazing websites. But let's focus on this specific one. This 3D effect is incredible. I really want to try to build it. However, I am a busy man, so no time to delve into 3GS. Let's just use Spline instead. And spoilers, we are going to build that. First, let's understand what exactly we want to build. We are looking at multiple objects, drawn towards the center of the scene, mimicking a gravitational pull. And we can interact with these objects using our mouse cursor. Alright, understood. Let's dive into Spline. Switch to the perspective camera and clear the scene. I'm feeling the light mode wipe today, so let's choose a whitish background color for our project. With the directional light gun, we'll boost the ambient light intensity. Now it's time to populate our world. Place a simple sphere at the center. In the material settings, replace color texture with normal one. This texture map creates the illusion of surface details like bumps and shadows. It's a fascinating topic to study, but we are actually using it purely because it looks hot. Let's add some highlights to our object. Include a matcap layer, select that option from the library, and adjust the blending mode to a screen to keep our previous textures visible. Add a Fresnel layer to make it more realistic, match its colors to our background and set its blending mode to overlay. And now let's add some roughness to it. Add an image layer and choose one of those textures. Touch it for a bit. And stop, that's enough. Now hide the image layer and in the lighting settings find the bump map selector and pick our image. Adjust the intensity to something around 0.2. Now it looks fantastic. Add a few more objects and apply the same texture to them. We are done with preparations, but now is the tricky part. Go to the project settings and in the simulation section enable physics. Create a ground, select all our objects and set their body type to dynamic to make them fall down. And this is not the effect we want to achieve. In fact, there is no native way to create a proper point gravity in Spline. I try to play around with Spline's variables feature, but it tends to complicate things. And here I was close to give up, until I recalled how physicists demonstrate planetary gravity. They describe gravity as a deep in space that objects fall into. And we definitely can build that in Spline. We can encase our scene within a large sphere, let the objects fall and position our camera overhead, looking down. Why a sphere instead of, say, a bowl, you might wonder? It's because we plan to add an interaction that allows objects to be pushed around and we want to prevent them from escaping the scene. So place a sphere at the center, make it much, much bigger, match its color to our background, turn off the lightning layer. Set visibility to back to only show the inner surface and disable both shadow casting and receiving. We don't need those here. Almost there. Let's fine tune it a bit. Again, select all our objects and in the physics settings increase the gravity scale, remove friction to allow free movement across the sphere's surface and add damping to smooth out the motions. Then slightly stretch our big sphere to enhance the simulated gravity and elevate it to reduce the time objects take to land. Now that's what I want to see. Position your viewpoint directly above the objects, add a camera to the scene and lock it. At last, we are done building something akin to a gravitational point with spline. Drop more objects to make our scene more lovely. Now how can we push those around? We can add drag and drop effect, but that's not it. We need an element that both interacts with our objects and follows the cursor. So let's create just that. Add a cylinder right at the center of the scene. Make it slim and much taller. In the events section, apply a follow effect. Increase the damping value to make the movement smooth. Restrict vertical motion and select no reset. Now we've got a good stick that does its job well. Let's make the cylinder invisible by disabling all its textures. This already looks impressive, but let's go again to the project settings and add a final touch by enabling aberration effect. And there you have it. Hit expert, go to the viewer tab, under play settings disable all mouse and touch interactions, then copy the code and integrate it right into your website. It's all good, but I ended up coding the same effect in 2D for this video, so I guess now I have to recreate it properly with 3GS in the near future.